It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news. This is the Southwest Outdoors Report. A lot of folks don't like to come to Lake Amistad because of the extreme clarity of the water. However, on today's show, we are back on the Texas-Mexico border just outside Del Rio, Texas at one of my favorite bass lakes. Used to be one of the hottest bass lakes in America. If you've watched our show, then you know that about a month ago, we were here during the peak of the spawn. Lots of bass were up on beds and we caught quite a few nice fish. That's all changed now. The water temperature has warmed up. The fish have moved back out deeper. And on today's show, we show you where they have gone and where they're headed for the duration of the hot summertime months. We're also taking you around the region for your weekly fishing reports from the coast along Texas and Louisiana, your Texas freshwater report, your Louisiana freshwater report, and your report from Oklahoma. We'll also have your big catch of the week where somebody wins free Costa sunglasses. We'll have your Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, show you the equipment you'll need headed into summer here at Lake Amistad. But first, here's Julie with your weekend planner. Let's take a look at the Salooner tables to help plan your weekend fishing trip. Saturday looks promising. The tables are predicting the best fishing conditions of the month starting early in the morning before sunrise. And Sunday shows fair conditions beginning at 5.40 a.m. Expect the sun to rise at 6.42 and set at 8.07. And evenings will feature a crescent moon that is 43% illuminated. Stay with us, we still have your freshwater and coastal fishing updates from around the region. Plus, I'll be back a little bit later with Kevin Van Dam for the Whataburger Ask the Pro feature. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest, by Lorance, and the all-new HDS Gen 2 with Structure Map Overview, by Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. By Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. Got it. Okay, we got something going. At Lake Amistad, fish is out here pretty deep off a of point. There he is. All right, just a bass. Come up here. There we go. Carolina rig bass. Chunky, fat one sitting out off a of point. There you go. That's what they look like at Lake Amistad. Welcome back, everybody. We are at Lake's late spring, headed into what's going to quickly become summertime down at this lake. So let him go back and let me set up the pattern for you right now. The lake is uh, real low. There are literally thousands of sloping points that run way out in the lake and nearly every one of those has all kinds of little bushes and brush and cover on it. And you just find what depth the fish are holding at on the points. And once you figure that out, you can hop from point to point to point so that fish actually came way out off the end of this point. You see right in the background, you can see it sloping out into the water and it actually runs. I'm looking at my Lawrence HDS7 up here, my Gen 2 unit, and I'm sitting just off the end of the point, way out about literally 100 yards from the point. So you've got to experiment around and figure it out. All right, that gets it started. We'll see what else is going on out here. Talk about the rig we're using and how to fish it. But first up, here's Cajun Phil and Kevin in the room. Hey friend, this is old Cajun Phil and Captain Kevin giving you a Southwest Louisiana fish report. We're actually on the water right now. We didn't get any time to get it mailed off, but we're out here right now and we are hammering some redfish on Calcasieu Lake. We're catching them on a variety of Strike Pro lures and there's a lot of redfish right now. This morning, Captain Kevin had a charter. He went out and he actually limited out with speckled trout and had another half a dozen or so nice reds. So it looks like it's finally changed around. I've been telling you about all the fresh water. Well, it looks like we're getting a little bit of that salinity coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. So keep an eye on Calcasieu Lake. It is just gonna get hot and heavy. We also talked to several of our friends down at the Hopedale area. They're also limited out with speckled trout. Catch your reds on a spoon and they're using live bait for the speckled trout. 
As far as the bass fishing goes, well, we talked to a couple of friends up at Toledo Bend this past weekend, and they were catching lots of bass. They're fishing off the point. They already started Carolina rigging, so looks like the bass already started moving a little bit deeper water, but i tell you what, right now fishing is hot and heavy. As the wind just slows down and it stops raining, it's going to be on fire. So well, next week, this is old Cajun Bill for Captain Kevin. So the front of the boat has got one hooked up right now, saying happy fishing, and may God bless, and we're going to see you next week. Boy, there's one down there deep. That's a solid pull. Up he comes. Here he comes. Big one. Big one. There we go. That is what we come to Amistad for right here. Nice fish. Got him. All right. There is what will happen if you come down here and throw a worm very long out off those little bushes right there. Man, what a Kong daddy that is. Fishing deeper water, headed into the post spawn in the summertime months. It's going to be mostly soft plastics here. So get your worm rod ready. Got my Lose Tournament SL Big 7 foot flipping stick right there. You got to have some backbone when you're going to be fishing for some brutes like that one. Let's let him go back. Spawned out female. All right, we got a little something working here. Stay with us. When we come back, Brian Hughes has her Texas Fishing and Lake Report to the Lone Star Lakes, and I'll have a little more bass fishing down on the Texas-Mexico border at Lake Amistad. There's one. Good fish. Clear water, boy. Clear water. And got another one with him. See if you can see this other fish that's with mine. Get him out in the sun. Watch behind my fish, there's a second fish coming in. And he spit up a, sh a perch right there by the fish right now. That's a brim that he spit up. Wow, there's all kinds of stuff going on here. He says not yet. Welcome back everybody to your SOR out here on Lake Amistad today. And uh, having a good day, catching a few largemouth bass. The fish are really relating to sloping underwater points and underwater humps that run out in the lake. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here, but first we're gonna let this fish go back. Put him out there where you can watch him swim off. Well, that's kind of cool. You can see 15 feet down real easy right here. Let me tell you, when you come out here, if you can find the little points that are less steep, the flatter points with a little brush out on the end are typically the ones that hold the bass. And then the other thing that holds them are the little humps that come up just out of the water or just under the surface. Again, got a little scattered brush around the edges or on top. Those seem to be the keys, especially to holding the better fish like that one. All right, let's check in right now with Brian Hughes, see what's going on in the state of Texas. Hi everybody and welcome to Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by Andrews Custom Leather, the absolute best in handmade custom shooting accessories. Now this week we're going out to Lake Ray Hubbard, site of the Texas High School Bass Championship. Now Ray Hubbard fishes like two completely different lakes depending on when you're there. During the week you can fish the riprap, marinas, and the points all over the lake with no trouble at all. You'll use things like buzz baits and pop bars, sinkos, crankbaits, and even Texas rigs, and you can use frogs around the vegetation. For the marinas, throw those spinnerbaits and jigs right up under the foam on the dock. Now on weekends, there is a lot of recreational traffic on Lake Ray Hubbard. That's gonna chase you away from the marinas. You can still fish up close to the riprap on the main lake bridges, and you can go out in the timber. That'll slow those skiers down. You can throw Texas rigs and drop shot rigs. For the hybrid guys on Ray Hubbard, an umbrella rig out on the main lake points, provided again, you can get the access when the crowds are there. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes. You wanna know what the number one bass lake in the United States is? Well, it's right here in Texas. Go to the website, click on my picture, you'll find out there. Let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, Texas Outdoors Journal brings you this week's report for the very best monthly coastal and inland fishing information, plus year-round hunting tips, check out our award-winning magazine. 
Texas Outdoors Journal is available on area newsstands or subscribe securely at the website on the screen. Well, fishing is picking up all along the Texas coast. On light wind days, fishing has been absolutely phenomenal. Look for trout and redfish on the south end of the Sabine Bay system, as well as in east and west Galveston Bay. Both of those jetties in Sabine and Galveston are holding good fish as they make their way back into the bays from the Gulf. Then moving on down the coast, you can find east and west Matagorda with a good bite along the south shoreline. Fish the grass beds, fish real tight because we've got some flooding tides and fish are up tight to those shorelines. There's a topwater bite that's also emerging. Further down the coast, on the inside and outside of Dagger and Stedman, there's been some good speckled trout caught along the grass lines. Then on the flats, some good redfish have been caught on potholes. On the lower Laguna Madre, the southeast end of Longbar continues to give up good trout as well as redfish. South Bay is starting to turn on as well. And one final thing in short, the land cut continues to see tide runners moving up toward Baffin Bay and the brown tide is starting to abate around the King Ranch shoreline. Use a rattling float or bright colors to catch your trout. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday have a single tide schedule of one high and one low tide each day. I'm Bill Olson and I'll see you on the coast. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Mercury, the official outboard of the Southwest Outdoors Report for 10 years running. By XI, start positive, stay positive. By Lose Reels and Rods, feel the difference. By Whataburger, proud to serve it, hot and fresh, 24 hours a day. And by Onyx Personal Flotation Devices and Rainwear, keeping you safe on the water. Up, look at here, straight up, straight up like a torpedo. Clear water, boy. I love this lake because of this clear water. Come up here, you're done. Come up here, you're done. All right, all right, there's a skinny old long torpedo looking bass. Hey, you're SOR Lake Amistad today, and uh. That one may take just a little bit of surgery. He's got it in the tongue, so uh, actually I'm just gonna pop that off, let him have it, try to keep my weight. And uh, hey, a couple of things if you're coming down here. Trying to kind of learn the experience down here. Let this fish go back and let you watch him swim away. Let me give you a couple of tips. If you're coming down to Lake Amistad, in the past, if you fished over on the Mexican side of the lake and not bought a Mexican fishing license, you really, really need to do that. Now, I'm not sure I would even recommend you go on the Mexican side of the lake. Lots of good fishing water on the Texas side. In fact, all of the fish that you've seen us catch on the show today have been on the Texas side of the lake. The other thing, there are tons of underwater humps, ridges, and points just under the surface of the water. You gotta be sure and wear your PFD. I'm wearing my Onyx Auto Inflate PFD. You get those at Academy, and uh, man, they are dynamite, lightweight. You don't even know they're there, and they could save your life, especially if you're coming to Amistad. Okay, let's go to Oklahoma, check on your fishing reports from there. Here's Gary Dollar. Hey, I'm starting to get more and better reports of the crappie fishing down Lake Eufaula now, especially in the Mid Lake area from both boat and bank fishermen. I decided to check things out early in the week and I put in at Elm Point down off of Highway 31 toward McAllister. What I found was the main lake area, water temp was about 66 degrees, a lot of stain to that water. You might be able to see a lure six to eight inches deep at most. The back of the creeks, you could add another two to three degree water temp to that and another three to four inch lure visibility. In front of the spawning pockets, you could catch them four and a half to six foot deep, some nice females, also a lot of little fish. The very back of the creek, I could catch some male crappie deep in the buck brush. And if you had some of that dead grass close to that, all the better for it. They were extremely tight. Two baits that worked best for me, a three inch Bobby Garland Slab Slayer in a chartreuse and white variation, and also the Bobby Garland Minnow Minder in the dark body pink tail variations. Now I also ran into the East Team menfolk from McAllister. They were having a great day fishing off a of dock down there off of Highway 31. 
They had six or seven nice slabs in their basket, having a blast. They were catching them on live minnows underneath a cork, about four foot deep. Got a couple of special Eufaula crappie tips on my webpage, Southwest Outdoors Report. Check that out. One thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. Some of the best speckled trout fishing along the entire Texas Gulf Coast happens in the late spring and early summer down around the Baffin Bay area south of Corpus Christi. But it's a large expanse of water. Where to go? Where to fish? We're about to tell you this week on the Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week. So let's go right now to the Lawrence HDS-10, the Gen 2 unit, and to show you that we begin at Corpus Christi, Texas, and you travel south down the intercoastal waterway to the mouth of Baffin Bay. You can run all the way back to the back of Baffin along the buoy line, and as you do, you're passing some of the best trout water on your left on the west side of the bay. Next, we zoom right down to the main point on the south shore at the entrance to the bay. You can start fishing there and work your way all the way down the shoreline to the west down to Los Corrales. Lots of rocks and lots of reefs in that area. It's a very famous spot for large speckled trout. Also, you can go back and start at that same point, work down the shoreline of the intercoastal for more good trout water. Among the best lures to catch these trout, topwater chuggers and a plastic shrimp imitation on a jig head. That's the Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week. Stay with us. When we come back, Julie has the Ask the Pro, and I'll have your Costa Catch of the Week where somebody wins Costa sunglasses, and we'll have your Academy Right Stuff show you the gear to come to Amistad. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Nitro Performance Bass Boats. Fish your best in a nitro. By Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. Quality soft plastic baits made in Oklahoma with American pride. By Academy Sports and Outdoors. Bright stuff, low price every day. And by Motor Guide Trolling Motors. Engineering for angling. Welcome back everyone. It's time now for our Whataburger Ask the Pro feature. Our question this week comes to us from Tommy in Cleburne, Texas, who would like to know, what is the best bait for catching a big bass? For the answer, let's check with Bass Fishing's all-time money winner, Kevin Van Dam. You know, if you're looking to catch a big fish, you want to use a bigger bait, and it's hard to beat a jig. You know, a jig imitates a crawfish, it can imitate a, a bluegill. So I use a jig with a large trailer on it uh, when I'm targeting really big fish. Thank you, Kevin. If you have a question for one of the pros, just visit our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com, click on the Ask the Pro link, and send us your information. Now let's get you back to Barry for the Costa Catch of the Week. So we're back up at the marina at Lake Amistad, and congratulations to this week's winner in the Costa Catch of the Week contest. He is young Cameron Reader of Friendswood, Texas. He is shown with a unique fish. This is a 20-inch Atlantic croaker he caught out of Galveston Bay, Texas. Now normally those little croakers are about six inches long. Check this one out. It is a new Texas State Junior Water Body Record for the species and Cameron caught it, happy birthday, on his seventh birthday. Cameron wins a brand new pair of Costa sunglasses. The featured Costa frame for this month is TAG. It's a cool looking frame that hugs your face and it's perfect for those sight fishing bass up on beds. It comes in three frame colors in either 580 glass or polycarbonate and it's available in your prescription lens as well. Check it all out the Costa tag at CostaDelmar.com. If you'd like a chance to win a pair of your very own here on our show, you need to go to our website, southwestoutdoorsreport.com, click on the Costa Big Catch link on the right-hand side of the page, fill in your info, and attach your photo. Next up, it's the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, and if you're coming to Amistad, for these upcoming summertime months, the Carolina rig needs to be one of your staples. We caught several bass on it on this show. Here's what it consists of. You need a fairly long seven or seven and a half foot medium heavy or heavy action casting rod. And I've got the brand new Lose Speed Spool Tournament Reel rigged up here with it. 
Now the Carolina rig consists of a one half or three quarter ounce brass Carolina rig weight slid up on your line. Behind that is a glass bead that's to provide a clicking noise, attracts the bass's attention and protects your knot on a double barrel swivel. Then behind that, we tie a three foot leader and we Texas rig, in this case, a lizard. And the way that happens is you stick it through the nose, you slide it up, cover the eye of the hook, then you pinch the lizard up, stick the point through out the other side, pinch it up and skin hook it the opposite side. That is a Jean LaRue Biffle O lizard in a jalapeno pepper color. Now, if you're coming here to Amistad, the extreme clarity of this water dictates that line size and line visibility is a big deal. So on my main line, I use 20 pound test strand brute strength followed up on the leader by 14 to 17 pound test strand fluoro cast. It's an extremely invisible line. You use that on the leader so you can get more strikes that way. Hey, Lake Amistad has made a big comeback. Over the last few years, the fishing here is getting better. Please remember to practice catch and release on all bass. If you're coming here, don't keep these bass. Let's keep this fishery good for many years to come. A special thanks to the Ramada Inn, Del Rio, Texas, for a clean, comfortable room and a great place to park your boat trailer out back and plug in your battery charger, charge your boat batteries overnight. From Lake Amistad, we'll see you next week. Until then, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.